Hello and welcome to iNerdius in the 49th video in my series on the 100 novels that I think best represent 20th century science fiction. And in this video, I am talking about A Canical for Leibowitz by Walter N. Miller Jr. A Canical for Leibowitz was originally, well, the novel was originally published in 1959. It's actually a fix up novel uh, put together from three novellas uh, with some. Uh, I think some extra material that were all published before the novel was published, and those were published, um, or at least two of them were published in the magazine of fantasy and science fiction in 1955 and 1956, according to the inside front cover here. This is the uh, 1976 Bantam paperback edition. And honestly, I'm not sure if this is my original uh, edition or if I picked it up somewhere later. I know I read this back in the 80s, either as part of that science fiction literature class I took at University of Florida, or it was on the reading list for that class, and I read it not long after, but I did read this in the 80s. This is a post-apocalyptic story. It also makes extensive use of ideas from religion, specifically the trappings of the Catholic religion, the idea that after the um, the nuclear war, which is referred to in this novel as the flame deluge. In fact, I'll just read the back. Down the long centuries after the flame deluge scoured the earth clean, the monks of the order of St. Leibowitz, the engineer, kept alive the ancient knowledge in their monastery in the Utah desert, they preserved the precious relics of their founder, the Blessed Blueprint, the sacred shopping list, and the holy shrine of Fallout Shelter. Watched over by an immortal wanderer, they witnessed humanity's rebirth from ashes and saw reenacted the eternal drama of the struggle between light and darkness, life and death. So some interesting things to unpack there, right? First of all, there is a nuclear war, and the world afterwards is essentially non-technological. In fact, there are people who um, despise anything to do with technology, and not long after the nuclear war, they hunt down and kill anybody who even smacks remotely of having anything to do with academia or technology. The character of Leibowitz, who becomes the saint, is an engineer, and he manages to um, survive by taking shelter at a monastery and then later on forms his own monastic order. And then when he dies, of course, he becomes a saint. He's beatified by the Pope, uh, the new Pope or of New Rome or the Pope of New Rome. And the monastic order is sort of set up uh, as a, uh, a branch of the Catholic religion around him. So pretty interesting stuff. Uh, the idea that the the monastic order preserves the knowledge of technology and the sciences. I mean, this is something that we have seen in science fiction before. Certainly, the Foundation Trilogy uh, touches on that. I mean, that's a major part of the Foundation Trilogy, actually, although it's not a, uh, a religious order that protects the, um, the sciences and the uh, uh, information and knowledge um, of technology and things. So those things are preserved um, by, by the monks. Uh, of the Order of St. Leibowitz. So interestingly, you know, it, it's sort of taking a, a cue from the Dark Ages, or what we, what we call the Dark Ages, which weren't necessarily quite as dark as I think uh, we have been led to believe, but still, um, there is this idea that monasteries preserved a lot of the, um, the old knowledge uh, from the ancient Roman Empire and the ancient Greeks, and that uh, this information was made available or rediscovered through um, uh, the use of what was in the monasteries at some point later on. So kind of an interesting idea. I really like that idea a lot. And I think it was used to great effect here. Canical for Leibowitz is considered to be one of the best science fiction novels ever written, if not the best, according to some people. Uh, definitely, I feel it deserves to be on this list for, for the reasons I just stated. It's an, just a a prime example of all of those things. And interestingly, I I like that I like the idea that it was written in three parts, that you have the 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 three novellas that were then brought together as one here, sort of echoing the idea of uh 
the ideas in um, Christianity uh, of you know the three aspects of God, if you will. So that's kind of cool. The uh, idea of history being cyclic, repeating itself is presented here as well. So once technology is rediscovered and a technological civilization is reestablished, then humanity sort of falls back into its old ways and the result is another nuclear war at the end. The difference this time is that the, uh, the monks have been able to create a uh, a spaceship that will take them to another world which will allow humanity to continue perhaps in a different way than on earth so sorry for the spoiler but that's uh, kind of a key element of the novel so anyway uh highly recommended i really liked reading this when i read it back in the 80s i will probably reread it at some point before too long it's the only novel walter and miller published in his lifetime. He did write a sequel that was published after he died, uh, and I've not read it, so I, I'm not going to include it uh, on this list, um, but I will read it someday, and perhaps I will do uh, a review of both of them together, this book and the sequel. So anyway, there you have it, number 49 on my imaginary bookshelf of the 100 novels that I think best represent 20th century science fiction, a Canical for Leibowitz by Walter N. Miller, Jr. Thank you very much.